<laughs> Hello. My name is David Gagnon. and I'm the executive director of the Nantucket Mariah Mitchell Association. And this is Dr. Regina Jorgensen, the director of astronomy at the Mariah Mitchell Association. So we have some exciting uh, events that we'd an event that we'd like to talk about this summer, and I'm and I'm going to like to ask Regina some questions about it. So, so Regina, there is something very big <laughs> happening this summer. Could you could you tell us about it? Sure. Yeah. So um, the big event that all astronomers across the world are pretty excited about is going to be a total solar eclipse of the sun that will be um, visible from most of um, the continental U.S. Um, mm -hmm at least as a partial eclipse. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in a second, what the difference mm -hmm. is there. So, um, and the eclipse is happening on August 21st of this year. And so um, astronomers all over the country, as well as other educators and, and people are getting very excited about this event. So what exactly is a solar eclipse? Right, so we have a solar eclipse when during a special time, we have the alignment of the sun, mm -hmm and then the moon and the earth. So the moon is essentially coming between the sun and the earth. Mm -hmm. And for a certain amount of time, the alignment is such that um, the moon will actually cast a shadow onto the earth that we see as the eclipse. Ah. So Regina, why doesn't this happen every month, for instance? Right, yeah. So it turns out there's actually a slight difference in the orbital plane of the Earth around the Sun mm -hmm. and then the Moon around the Earth. And those two planes are actually tilted with respect to each other at about five degrees. And so that means that basically we don't have eclipses every month. Mm -hmm. So they're a, a bit more rare than that because you have to be um, sort of have the right arrangement of the Sun and the Moon and the Earth in order to see an eclipse. Ah. So Regina, how often do solar eclipses occur and how frequently on Nantucket? Yeah, so um, solar eclipses occur generally about twice a year or so, someplace mm -hmm. on the Earth. Um, but the problem is, is that oftentimes it'll be in the middle of the ocean or it'll be you know, in a different country. So what's very exciting about this eclipse is that it's actually gonna be traveling across the entire United States. And it'll be starting in Oregon on the West Coast and traveling mm -hmm. down through the middle of the US and out South Carolina. Um, so this means that um, uh, a large percentage of the population in the United States will be able to see, mm -hmm. um, have the opportunity if they travel to the path of totality to see the total solar eclipse and everybody in North America will be able to see at least a partial eclipse from wherever they're located. Um, I think the, um, the last time that this happened um, was in 1970. And, oh um, and so, and the next total solar eclipse um, that will happen in the United States will actually be um, not again until 2024. Um, and even then, still on Nantucket, it'll be a partial eclipse. Oh, that's exciting. I remember when I was 10 years old and, and <clears throat> I was able to see a total eclipse. Uh-huh, nice. It was really exciting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so Regina, what will people see on Nantucket? Right, so um, unfortunately here on Nantucket, th for this eclipse, we are not in the path of totality. Mm -hmm. And so we'll only be seeing a partial eclipse from Nantucket. Um, the total coverage of the sun will be about 70%, mm -hmm. which means during the peak of the eclipse, um, the disk of the sun will be about 70% covered with the disk of the moon. Mm -hmm. um, and the whole event of the eclipse will last about three hours. So from the moment that the moon first starts to cover the sun until the moment when it leaves um, will be about three hours. So, um, so Will it be dark here? Are we going to experience like nighttime darkness or what right. will we experience? Right. So um, that's a very good question. So we won't experience nighttime darkness. Um, mm -hmm. Only people who are on the path of totality will okay. experience nighttime darkness um, typically for about two minutes. And it actually does become right. like nighttime. Stars come out. Um, you know, birds kind of freak out because it all of a sudden became nighttime when they weren't expecting it. And um, apparently, and I haven't yet had this experience myself, but being in the path of totality is a really, really amazing experience yeah. for exactly that reason. Yeah. Um, on, so on Nantucket, that will not be happening because it's only gonna be about 70%. So I think what people will experience here is you will notice that it's less bright mm -hmm. outside, but it will still be daytime. Right. Um, and of course, one of the important things to keep in mind um, is that 
with a partial solar eclipse, like what will be visible here from Nantucket, um, it's very important to never look directly at the sun right. during the eclipse because you will still be looking at the sun, at least part of the sun, which can be very um, dangerous to your eyes. Sure. What's striking to me is that the total eclipse, you only have about two minutes to right. experience that. So you really don't want to go in for a glass of water and no. uh, you, you need to be patient. Yes. And yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. and be ready because it's very, going to be over very quickly. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Very neat. So where is the best place for Gina to, to see the total eclipse? Yeah, so anywhere along the path of totality again okay. that goes through the United States, but it turns out um, that if you actually look at the weather predictions mm -hmm. for um, the cities that are along the path, yep. it turns out that actually Oregon, surprisingly enough, has the least probability of cloud cover on ah. August 21st, if you look at historical record data over the last 30 years or so. Um, so a lot of um, astronomers and eclipse chasers and whatnot will be heading to Oregon to observe the eclipse. Mm -hmm. Nice. So to be an astronomer, you really almost need to be a bit of a meteorologist as well. Um, I suppose, yes, yeah. <laughs> actually, that's true, yeah. Great, yeah. so you, where will you be during the eclipse? I'm assuming you're not gonna be here. This is a very exciting event. I'm, almost positive you want to be where there's total where there's a total eclipse. That's right. So I personally actually haven't seen a total solar eclipse yet mm -hmm. myself. And um, so I will be going to Oregon to observe the eclipse. And I will actually be live streaming my experience back to uh, people at the Mariah Mitchell Association right. on Vestal Street. We'll, we'll have an event, um, an eclipse party for the day. Yeah. And so I will be live streaming back my experience of what the what it is like to be in the path of totality. Terrific. Um, anything else special going on uh, during, I, I noticed, uh, well, I know that we're going to have an eclipse week. Yep. And um, anything else about that week That's you right. can tell so, us about? Yeah, yeah, so the whole week before the eclipse, which again is August 21st, um, starting the week before, we're going to have several events at Mariah Mitchell Association yeah. to sort of get ready for the eclipse. We will have um, the Tuesday before, we're going to have um, a workshop to make pinhole mm -hmm. cameras so that people can have their own um, uh, capability to view the eclipse safely mm -hmm. themselves. Um, and on the Wednesday before, I'll be giving um, an eclipse talk along mm -hmm. with um, Jason Finger, who's our deputy director and historian at Mariah Mitchell, and yeah. she'll be talking about the, uh, a little bit about the historical aspects of the eclipse. Um, as it turns out, Mariah Mitchell herself actually went to observe two different mm -hmm. solar eclipses, um, one in Iowa and one mm -hmm. in Colorado. Um, and so that we have kind of a historical connection with eclipse chasing at Mariah Mitchell. Um, and then we'll be doing another workshop the day before the eclipse. Mm -hmm. And then on eclipse day on Monday, we will have um, sort of an um, all afternoon party um, on Vestal Street where people will be invited to come look through our solar telescope to observe the eclipse. We'll also be handing out eclipse goggles um, or glasses mm -hmm. basically that are, will allow you to actually look at the sun um, in a safe way. So again, I just have to stress to everybody, to be really careful, um, especially if you're not in the path of totality, you will never be able to look at the sun and should not look at the sun directly, even with sunglasses. You need a very special um, kind of solar filter. And um, we at Mariah Mitchell have a, a bunch of them that we'll be giving out um, yeah. to the public for free. Also, mm. if you're not on Nantucket, um, public libraries will have a lot of these glasses. You can also look on online to try to buy them um, beforehand. Yeah. So, and I'd like to point out, even though Regina's not going to be here for the event, we're going to have a lot of support here. We're going to have our, we, we may have some of our astronomy interns here, mm -hmm. and certainly Gary Walker, who, uh, if any of you have gone to the open nights on Monday and Wednesday nights, uh, will have met him as well. And he's a, is a great astronomer and uh, will be very helpful. Mm -hmm. So we're looking forward to having a lot of people there. Yeah. In case anyone misses the eclipse, um, maybe it's a, foggy day, which yeah. often happens here. Yeah. Uh, when's the next opportunity for us to see either a partial or total eclipse here on Nantucket? Right, so the next partial eclipse um, that will be well visible from Nantucket will be in 2024, so not too far away. Mm -hmm. um, uh, unfortunately, the next total solar eclipse that will actually cross Nantucket is in 2079. So wow. we have a little ways to wait for that. So Someone may need to carry me out. Right. to see that, right. I suspect. So, well, that's, yeah. that's very neat.
So thinking more broadly, is there anything special about eclipses that you'd like to tell us about? You know, what, why is there, you know, why yeah. are we all excited about this? Why yeah. is this so special? Yeah, so like we were talking about, they're rather rare, and so that's mm -hmm. actually makes them quite special. But when you actually think about it, the fact that we even have total mm -hmm. solar eclipses is kind of amazing. Um, it turns out by coincidence and by chance, the apparent size of the moon in the sky mm -hmm is almost exactly equal to the apparent size of the sun in the sky, even though we all know that the moon is much closer to mm -hmm. us and the sun is, of course, much farther away. Um, and so there's this sort of funny coincidence that the, the moon happens to be about 400 times smaller than the sun in diameter, mm -hmm. and it also happens to be about 400 times closer to us. Ah, and so right. the combination of those two things mean that we actually get to see total solar eclipses at all. Um, which always blows my mind a little bit to realize that, that, that that's even something that happens. Uh -huh. So it's pretty crazy when you think about it. So Regina, what do you think people's reaction might have been in the past to seeing a total solar eclipse? Yeah, sure. So I think long ago, of course, before people knew what they were and really understood you know, how the solar system uh, worked, yeah. I think um, when eclipses happened, it, they inspired a lot of fear, of course, mm -hmm. um, because it seemed like all of a sudden the sun was disappearing, mm -hmm. and so people would become, you know, very scared. Um, I do know that some ancient civilizations actually um, used eclipses um, and figured out that the Earth was round because of they were able to observe eclipses, mm -hmm. and they were actually able to predict when eclipses would happen. And so you can imagine um, if you had the ability to do that, you might actually be quite um, a powerful figure right. in your right. society. Interesting. Um, yeah. So. So just to make sure we cover the safety aspect again, yeah. uh, I know you said that we'll have glasses available for people. Are there any other ways to view the eclipse uh, without glass, special mm -hmm. glasses? Right, so if you don't actually, or you're not able to get um, special glasses to actually look at it at di directly, the best thing to do is try to observe it indirectly via projecting it somehow. Mm -hmm. And the best way to do this is, or there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can either make a pinhole camera mm -hmm or sort of just have a pinhole and project um, the mm -hmm. image of the sun yeah. through that pinhole. If you don't even have a piece of cardboard in which you can poke a hole, mm -hmm. um, the other way to do this is just to find a, a leafy tree and un stand under the leafy tree. And as it turns out, the um, light that falls through the leaves, the leaves will actually act as kind of a pinhole. Mm -hmm. And so they will actually project onto the ground many, many images of the eclipsing sun. So it's kind of wow. cool to take a look at um, the, the light that's coming through the tree and say project it onto the grass or the concrete and you'll see all these little tiny um, arcs or eclipsed ah, right, suns. Right. And you can also do that just by making your fingers into a cross like this and those create sort of cheap pinholes as well. Right. So there's a lot of ways to try to do it um, even if you don't end up with solar glasses or with a special solar telescope. Okay. And again, we'll just emphasize not to actually look sure. directly at the sun. Yeah, and I'm thinking now of people with iPhones or other cameras that they, they, you want to maybe capture this image in some way, and the best way to do that would probably be looking at a projection That's of right. it yeah. on the ground or on a piece of paper right. in a pinhole camera, yeah. or, as opposed to trying to take a picture toward the sun yep, and risk right. damaging your own eyes. Yeah. So that's great. Well, we're really excited about it, uh, Regina. We're happy for you and I'm excited for you that, yeah. that you may indeed see your first total eclipse of the sun. Yep, fingers out, crossed. Out west and yeah. praying for really great weather yeah. for you and, and for us as well. So, well, my name is David Gagnon once again. This is Dr. Regina Jorgensen from the Nantucket Mariah Mitchell Association. Um, thank you for tuning in.